he looks a little bit odd and that's because his coloring is very important okay so we're gonna have brown and black and i've also got this peachy color just for a lighter tone and hyena is sort of like a sandy a lightish sandy color with bits of brown and he's got these black spots and um there are quite a few different types of hyenas but the spotted hyena is the biggest hyena that we have so we're going to start with this black and i want to give him a good dark black nose and to make this nose more 3d i want to make it extra dark on top and i'm going to make his nostrils really dark my pencil crown and then i'm going to shade the rest just a sort of medium all right maybe i put it a bit darker just right around the edges just to give that shape okay his muzzle his, his whole front of his mouth here is black so we are going to put that in and we want to be thinking of, about our mark making game today i want to start thinking about this as a 3d shape so if i think about how his fur is coming over his nose and down the side of his muzzle and down under his cheeks and I'm imagining how this is going to turn into a 3D I'm thinking of it as a 3D shape covered in fur so I'm making lots of little marks but I'm thinking about what direction my marks are going very important Alright, I'm going to kind of bring it up between his eyes a little bit here. Yeah? And I want it to also come towards his eyes, around his eyes. He has a sort of bit of eye makeup. Just put a little bit of light here. And on the side. Okay, so that's a good start. What I want to do now is I want to make it even more 3D. So I'm going to pick a side that I'm going to make darker than the other side. And I think I'm going to pick this side here. And I'm going to make it, if I imagine that light's coming from the side, this side of his face is a bit lighter. And this side is going to be darker. So I'm still thinking about the direction of my, of my lines. And I'm just... You can see he's starting to become a bit more 3D. And I'm bringing that shadow up around his eye a little bit. And let me do on his chin here. Alright, I can fade out some of that. Alright, that's a good start for now. I might come back to it later, but we'll see where it goes. I'm also going to put some dark inside his ears. And those marks are just sort of fading out. I'll put brown around. You can see there's a lot of sort of scribbly marks for this fur. If I'm doing a small area, I want to use small marks. And he's got short fur in these bits. Okay, right. A spotted hyena has got lots of spots. And unlike a cheetah, which is quite, um, he's got a lot of similar sized spots. There's nice little neat circles and they're very... Um, evenly spread across his body a hyena has got very random spots some of them are sort of stripes so I'm gonna just do a lot of random stripes and and dots and things and they're going all sorts of directions and some of them are long and some of them look like they're on top of each other and some of them are big and some of them are small and they're very completely random so I'm gonna cover his body Let's stop there for now. I'm going to take my brown pencil crown now and I'm going to give him a general cover cover of a light brown. So I don't have a sandy brown pencil crown. I'm using what I've got though. I'm just going to color gently with my light brown, making lots of marks for his fur and then I'm going to come back and bring in some more darker tones and shadows. 
um, let's just look quickly here at his face. They kind of have this, um, at the middle of his, of their face, they have this sort of parting, if I can say. It's not really parting, but he's got some shape to his face. So when I draw it now, I'm going to go this way on the one side, and then I can make my marks follow the other side of his face. There we go, um, he's a lovely and scrubbly and got lots of texture, uh, hyena really does have very messy wild hair, so it's very fitting to be able to do that. We're going to add him some shadows now. I chose the side of his, um, his, his nose to be darker, I want to continue that, so everything that is on this side of a shape, like the side of his face and his neck on this side, the side of his leg. The side of his leg i want to make a little bit darker to bring out that sense of shadow so this whole side of his face here i can make a little bit darker just keeping with that texture i don't want to lose my texture and if he has a shape here i'm actually there's a little bit of there's going to be a bit of a shadow on this side in the middle of where that kind of joins so you can put that in um, and maybe just a little bit around his eyes. We always want to pay more attention to his eyes and the sides of his ears. Right, along his tail, I want to put some black um, scribbly sort of along the edge of his tail. I'm sort of giving him a bit of a black tail so I can see that tail. Must not disappear, it's important. And I'm actually just going to break out with some, some scribbles. Okay, right, I'm going to take my black and I'm going to just darken one or two of the shades of the areas where there is a shadow. All right, he's starting to come to life. The more I work into him, the more layers I add. Uh, he's coming more and more to life, becoming more character coming out. And so you need to be thoughtful about how much you do. Knitting these layers together, you could carry on for a very long time, getting finer and finer and finer. And it is well worth the time. But you also need to know when to stop because if you work into a picture too much, it will eventually get just flat into one color and I'll start covering up all of my lovely mark making that we have been practicing lately this last last few days so I want to have all this mark making and texture and light and dark if I keep going and keep going and keep going I will eventually lose it so be thoughtful and mindful and I put a little bit of brown above his eyes here just to bring out some of his expression and I'm going to put a little bit of brown in this black here and he's really got that sort of dirty uh, menacing sort of look about him all right I'm gonna leave it for now like that as I said be mindful of your picture be thoughtful apply your mind and think about what you're doing I'm going to do some grass now and I'm gonna do some green grass just because I want to brighten up my picture I've got a lot of brown um, I didn't really use my peach, I could use my peach, but maybe I'll just add in a few spots around the edges of his fur that can just brighten it up. It's not that this is one of his colors, but my eye just catches a glint of something bright in my drawing and that just can lift a drawing. So I'm putting in very little around the edges, maybe where there's some light catching his fur as he's walking. Um, but I'm not coloring him in peach. Uh, I'm just adding that little bit of brightness. Okay, when we do grass, a great way, a great way to do grass is to, and some of you have, I've shown this to you before, is to get a scrap piece of paper and we're going to put it on our page here. I want quite long grass because he, uh, um, 
a hyena's habitat is open plains. Um, they can also be semi sort of arid, which is very dry, so just scrub dry savannas. But let's imagine that we've just had our rains and it's lovely green and grassy. Okay, so I'm going to, I want long, long grass. And I'm, I'm following the same direction, all my strokes. And I'm going to put in some shorter, darker strokes. And I'm going to put in a few light ones at the top. Okay, and you can see where my paper was. Now I'm going to change the direction of my paper. And I'm going to repeat the process, but overlapping with different areas of grass. Some of them can be long, some of them can be short. Think about the direction. These, the darker tone is really so that this grass actually has shadows as well. And the light is forming that sun is just really gleaming through the light. Okay, so I've got two. Doesn't matter which direction we're going, but I want to fill up this space. I can actually even be more dynamic and move my page all over. My grass is all pointing up, but my page is changing and it's just giving a lovely effect of the grasslands. And you can build this layering and layering of grasses as you go. I want to cover up where his feet are. It's giving a beautiful texture. Let me change colors. Changing direction. The darkest one you don't need a lot of, just a little bit. And see how it's coming. Right, you could think about what else could be in the background. Uh, you could put a tree, some rocks, you could put a skyline in um, with, with your grassy um, savannas going back. Hyena uh, is an important part of our natural heritage. It's a very intelligent, often misunderstood animal, but I hope that you enjoyed drawing it. And if you enjoy drawing it, go and find out more about hyenas and I hope that you enjoyed the drawing and enjoy the rest of your day.